What is up everyone and welcome to what I think is a pretty cool and unique video. Now, as you guys know, I've recently upgraded to triple U2412Ms, thanks to Todd. So that means that my main setup is absolutely awesome. Now that left me with two Dell 2009Ws, which are still very decent monitors in my opinion, and they've served me well. And I didn't have a purpose for either of them until I thought of this pretty cool plan. So I reckon you guys are going to enjoy this. It's um, something pretty cool that I thought of and it's going to make my life a lot easier. So today I'm going to show you my computer repair slash testing sort of station type area setup, whatever you want to call it. I haven't thought of its official name yet. So, what's the story behind this? Well, as you guys can see, I have tidied up this portion of my desk quite a lot. And it's given me a lot more of a sort of workspace to work on computers. As you guys have probably seen from the previous videos, I do a lot of work on computers on this desk. And I've avoided doing so in the past because it's been over cluttered and messy. And I didn't really have enough space to open up, say, a Power Mac properly on the desk or whatever. But I've improved that now and things are a little bit better. I still want to get rid of quite a bit of this clutter over here. Um, not so much this little unit over there because that's that's fine, you know, it's got my documents and stuff in it. But more this area here with the CDs and the pens and stuff. But they're all sort of essentials and things that are just hanging around at the moment. But for now, I'm quite happy. Now, as you guys can see, I've used one of my Duronic single monitor arms to fly up the Dell 2009W. It's quite high. It's higher than I'd have a computer monitor to use a computer but that's because it's out of the way it's completely up there just for test testing purposes now if i could i would like to have it even higher but that is the max height of the stand now of course because this monitor is on the duronic monitor arm i can move it around anywhere so it's a very flexible setup if i need it close to me then i can move it out and it becomes a lot easier for me to see what's on the screen if i just want it in the background to monitor something in the background i can push it right up against the wall i can turn it this way and the cool thing about that is then it becomes part of my main setup. As you guys can see, it pretty much sits flush with the side of this monitor. And that means that if I'm, say for instance, I'm working on a problem on a computer I'm testing, I can then read off of Google and forums and stuff on this machine, and I can type on this machine, and I won't have to sort of move around all the time. So it's much quicker in that way. But most of the time, I reckon the monitor is just going to be sitting back here. Now, why did I do this in the first place? Why did I fly a monitor up here? The main reason was because every time I wanted to test out a system or repair a system, I was going upstairs into my studio, grabbing a spare monitor, bringing it down, finding a power cable for the monitor, finding a VGA cable, finding a power cable for the system, hunting around for a random keyboard and mouse, and do you know, it actually sometimes took longer to set that up than fix a computer. Um, which is completely balmy. So I wanted something that was easy to use, quick and convenient to set up. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking, ah, Tom, the monitor is just sitting on this stand. What's so good about that? You know, it's not exactly cool. You still have to go hunting for cables and stuff. Well, the cool thing is this monitor is totally pre-wired. So first off, let's talk power. If I hit the power button, as you can see, the monitor powers up just fine. So that's one problem out of the way. The power cable is um, trailing underneath the desk, plugging into an extension lead. It's not part of my main setup. It's totally separate power, which is good because sometimes I may want this on when my main setup is off or that's probably rare, maybe vice versa, for instance. So that's power out of the way. Great. Now, what about a signal? Well, VGA cables and DVI cables are very, very hard to plug in when you can't see what you're doing and you risk bending pins. And I've ruined a lot of VGA cables by trying to quickly ram them into monitors while I'm trying to set up um, in, in a hurry to do a video or whatever. So I've decided to bunch up, and if I just reach behind my N64 here, now this is pretty damn convenient. If I pull up this bundle of cables right here and set it on the desk, you guys can see that I have right here a VGA cable, which will be the most common one used. I have a DVI cable, which will be sometimes used, and a USB cable. We'll talk about USB in a second. So this is bundled up here. This does not look neat, as you guys can see, but it doesn't matter. When you're testing a system or fixing a system, 
you're not after neatness. It's not part of your main setup. It doesn't have to be really clean and tidy. Now, all of these cables are cable tied nicely behind this bar here, and then they just sit behind my desk. You can't see them from anywhere. The N64 hides the bundle that's going down the back, and even if the N64 wasn't there, they're all black cables. You can't really notice them anyway. And they sit there with this detachable cable tie. So if I want to separately use the cables, I remove this detachable cable tie and they all become separate cables. Now, one thing you may notice, I have created my own sort of multi-core of cable, if you like, out of these cables, simply by cable tying at, um, you know, every four inches. And it becomes one cable, easier to ravel, but at the end, there's enough split so that it's convenient to use with any kind of system. So, there we are. I've got power to the monitor and I've got signal to the monitor. All I have to do is plug it in to the computer, which is a very, very quick process. So, that's really convenient. Now then, guys, what about USB? Why do I have a USB cable here? Well, as you guys know, the Dell 2009W has a four-port USB hub. Two USB ports on the side, and two USB ports on the bottom. It's a very convenient design. That's one thing I like about Dell monitors. My new ones are the same. So having a USB port is all cool, right? Having a USB hub, sorry, is all cool. I plug this into the testing computer, but most computers have got at least four USB ports, so it's not really needed. But why have I done it? Well, underneath, plugged into a USB port, and I'll pull it out quickly to show you, even though it'll never be pulled out. I have this. This is a little dongle, and this is exactly what you think it is probably. No, it's not a pen drive. This is a wireless receiver for a keyboard and mouse. Now, this is where the beauty comes in. Not only do I not have to find signal and power cables for anything, I have one multi-core loom under here. All I have to do is plug in an extra USB, and I don't have to find keyboard, mouse, or cable anything up because from right underneath the desk, sitting on top of my DVD player, I just pull out this. And I've purchased this specifically for this task. It was like 14 pounds on Amazon or something. It's a cheap keyboard and trackpad combination. Now, I would never choose to use this for anything serious, but for testing, this is absolutely awesome. So, I plug in the USB to the system. It's got USB hub. There is the wireless dongle. Reason I'm using USB in there is so I don't use the so I don't lose the wireless dongle. It's sitting underneath the monitor. It never goes away, and I have access with a keyboard and mouse to that system that I'm testing, and it is wireless. So if I have the monitor like this on my main setup, like I was talking about, and I'm referencing things on the main setup, I just whip this keyboard over here and I am controlling the system that I am testing out. So everything is easy, and I really do mean everything to do with the system is easy. So there is that. And of course, there is one other little advantage to having this USB cable and the USB hub active. Often when I'm testing systems or reinstalling systems or uh, repairing systems, I need to insert a pen drive because I may be um, booting up from a, a Windows pen drive or whatever, or I may be installing things that I've got stored on pen drives. I've also got things like Memtest or whatever on pen drives. And if I put them in the side of the monitor, it's a little bit easier than fumbling around the back of the system. And also, if I'm testing a bare motherboard, it is pretty much a lot easier and, a, you know, a little bit safer to actually plug the USB in the side of the monitor. So I never have to faff around with touching the motherboard when it's switched on. Not a big deal, but certainly a nice little plus that is very, very handy. So this is how the setup looks. If I have a small computer or whatever, then I can just have it sitting there. I can plug it in, like that HP the other day, for instance. That is awesome. If I have a bigger computer, I can have it on the desk in this space here. And talking of a bigger computer, let's whip one up into the frame. Now this is, as you guys can probably tell, a Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. It is sitting there quite happily. And no, it is not my Hackintosh. And no, it is not the other Quicksilver. I've got yet another Quicksilver. I bought it locally for £20. There will be a video coming up about this guy either next week or sometime later in this week. I'm not too sure. Probably next week. I'll do a specific video about this system. But as it stands at the moment, I am only using it for demonstration purposes. So there is the test setup. 
and there is the system. Now let me get you a new camera angle and I will plug in the multi-core cable, as I like to call it, into the back of this system. So this is how long it takes me to plug the system in. I bring this cable, there's enough length on it, just enough length so that it can reach over here with ease. Now this Power Mac is either ADC or VGA, so of course I'm gonna be using the VGA connector. I'll plug it in like so, and if I get it the right way up, it will be an advantage, of course. Plug in the VGA, like so. Do it up, just in case. The DVI can just hang there. Of course, plug in USB for the reasons I mentioned earlier, and that is that. That is that system patched into my test setup, and I can leave it there, and the DVI is no hindrance. I just tuck it under there, and we are sorted. The only one connection that I do not have pre-set up is power for a system. Now, I've got this, um, little idea or a couple of little ideas and I want to know what you guys think. At the moment I have a kettle lead plugged in on the floor down here that trails out from in front of my desk and it is long enough so that I can plug it in to the system. Now there are a few things that I don't like about this. Firstly, it is not as clean as the rest of the setup. The cable itself is trailing in front of the desk as you can see and that does not look really cool at all. Um, I would like the power cable coming from the back here. Now, I was toying with the idea of just leaving an IEC power cable looped around the back, cable tied there so that I could pull it whenever I needed it, plug it straight in, and that is job done. However, I have come to the realization that lots of systems that I get in do have proprietary power supplies. For instance, if I want to do Mac Mini G4 maintenance, I'll be putting the Mac Mini G4 on this test bench here, but that has a proprietary power supply. So having an IEC cable sitting here would be totally useless to use with my Mac Mini G4. So my second idea was to actually get an extension lead up on top of the desk and have a couple of 13 amp sockets sitting here. Now, I don't really want that because it takes up space on the desk. So what I think I may do, and let me know if you guys think this is a good idea, I'll keep a kettle lead handy, because obviously most systems use a kettle lead, and I will cable tie a twin 13 amp socket onto this pole here, a black one so that it looks nice, you can get them for less than a fiver, and I'll just plug in whatever system is needed. And then, if I do need to test a laptop or whatever, I've also got convenient sockets to do so right there. I think that'll be cool, let me know what you guys think, but anyway, let's showcase the setup itself. So let's power on the Mac. And this is a true example of how the setup is working because I have never tested this Mac. I just brought it home today. So the machine is powering up and the monitor is waiting for input. Actually, the monitor is waiting for input through DVI or it should auto switch. Here we go, VGA. And there it is, there is the Apple logo. This G4 is successfully booting up and it has a disc in the optical drive. Now I'm gonna pause the camera and I'm gonna wait for it to boot up because obviously it'll take a while and then I will, of course, showcase the keyboard and mouse. Well guys, this is exactly why I need this setup. The Quicksilver is not booting up, it's stuck at the blue Apple screen. I have no idea why, so of course we will look into that more in the Quicksilver related video that I'll upload soon and that will feature this setup and every video where we test out computers from now on will feature this setup. Now I will leave it trying to boot up while I talk um, a little bit more just to see if it will boot up but a few closing notes then. Um, this obviously takes batteries so it'll be important to remember to turn it on and off. But once they are synced up, this keyboard and the dongle, then they will stay synced no matter which system you plug in. Uh, this is a relationship between the keyboard and the dongle, uh, not the computer. Now, with wireless keyboards and mice, and um, this is a keyboard trackpad combination, yes, there is a little more to go wrong, but I'm not looking for extreme reliability. That's not what I need. Uh, just reliable enough is good. 
and it'll install a driver just as quickly as any kind of USB keyboard or USB wired mouse that you've plugged in. So that's good enough and of course it'll work on all the Macs because Macs just work with all keyboards and mice really. Um, so that's great. Now one other little thing, if I'm using an older system that does not have USB, then of course I'll have to dig out a PS2 keyboard and mouse. This is just the way it goes, but there is no clean and easy way to implement those two. Um, maybe I'll think of something in the future, but right now this will be sufficient for most of the systems that I test. I do have a PS2 keyboard handy, which I can also keep on top of my DVD player, uh, just in case the system is fussy with using the wireless USB keyboard to navigate around the BIOS and boot menu and stuff like that prior to getting into an operating system. That is absolutely fine and I do know the PS2 keyboards are very, very handy and uh, this setup is not fully closed, it's not a closed system if you know what I mean. I'm happy to expand in the future and use different keyboards and mice if I need to. So that is that, that is the setup, as you can see the Quicksilver is not booting up, but I am very very pleased, apart from this little cable that sometimes sneaks down there, there are no cables in sight with this system when it's not in use, and when it is in use, all it is is this little multi-core of cable, and hopefully I will have two power cables, two power sockets on here very very soon, I think that will look really cool, and I'm looking forward to doing that. You will be able to see that in a future video, probably, if you keep your eyes peeled. So, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone for checking out my new test slash repair computer station bench thing, whatever it is. Um, I think it's going to really help me out. It's going to speed up all of those kind of things that I do a lot. And I do want to get into more computer repairs and whatnot. So this will really, really help me out. A dedicated system is something that I've wanted for a while, and here it is. I think it's ideal. Also, a massive thank you to you guys that have been complimenting my new setup. It is not complete. I do have a lot left to do now that I have two new monitors. Um, there's a, a couple of upgrades that I want to make to my setup still. So expect more Ultimate Desk setup videos in the future. But huge thank you to everyone that's complimenting it. I know you guys absolutely love it, so I really do appreciate it. And all things said, guys, that is pretty much it for this video. So I hope you've enjoyed. It's been so fun to make. I wanted to show this off for a little while now. I've had the monitor mounted up here for a good few days. It's really cool. Hope you guys like it. Feel free to leave your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Do whatever you want to do. And of course, I will see you in the next video. Oh.